Hi, welcome back to another video about embedded system. So this is the part three where we will have to uh, understand deeply what we were doing in the previous two video. And in this video, we have two big questions that we need to answer. So the first question is, what are we doing when we writing the C code? What is the role, or what is the role that we are playing when we writing the C code? What are the things that we can see? in order to interact with and understand the interaction that we are doing. On the other hand, we will try to understand what is the um, XRTL block, what does it represent, and that's it. And also understand more the parameters when we configure the XRTL in Vivido. Now going to the first question. So the first question is, what are we doing when we're writing the C code? So uh, this is the presentation that I prepared. So as you can see, on the very high level, we have the level when we inside the chip, the zinc chip, and when we are outside the chip. Again, um, so the zinc chip is this black area and outside the chip, when we indicate those follets, is here. They are the follets. They are the follets. And uh, inside our zinc chip, in this black area, we have two domain. The first domain is the processing system, where we implement our C code through the SDK. And the second domain is the programming logic, where we have the FPGA. And actually, what we are doing is not designing the FPGA block inside the programming logic domain, but mostly it is done by the intellectual property block. Uh, let's open the Vivido. So open the diagram. So this is the diagram, right? So our processing system here, this block represents our processing system domain everything inside the processing system domain and everything which is let me see and everything which is like the XRTVO and everything all of the block which is outside the processing system already automatically generated created block inside the FPGA so actually we don't design anything within the FPGA domain we are only writing the C code in order to control the processing system so that's that's what we really doing when we start we writing the C code so as a summary the answer to the question what we are doing when we are writing the C code what we are doing when we are writing the C code is to give controls to the processing system, tell the processing system what it should do in order to control all of the blocks implemented in the FPGA domain in the programming logic of the Zinc chip. That's it. We don't design, we don't uh, write any code, we don't write any VHDL code in order to, or Verilog code in order to create any FPGA circuit inside the programming logic. No, we don't do that. We only do doing like the control system inside the processing system. It seems like we were playing the operating system somehow in a normal computer. Okay, next is what is XRGPIO? How can we understand the parameter inside the XRGPIO, right? So the first concept we need to understand is that when we interact with the XRTVL, when we we writing the C code in order to interact with our XRTVL, we don't interact directly to our XRTVL. We, from the C code, interact with the memory inside the processing system. We interact with the memory inside the processing system. And within that memory, there will be some area which is like the memory map of our XRTPO. So whatever we interact with this range inside the memory, then we are 
directly interacting with the Exxon Trivio. And how all of those things can be interpreted into the GYL registers and everything it is done automatically by the software so we don't care we don't we don't care about those things we only care okay what are the areas inside the memory which is the map of our XRGYO from which we will know what kind of information we should interact with or what kind of information we can read from that from our C code. Okay, now we will see some parameters of our XRGVO. So this is the block of our XRGVO. Last time we configured the interface GVO connected to the LED for bits, for bits because we have four LEDs, so a bit represents a LED. And here we can see inside our extra GPO block there will be the GPO interface or port which is config as okay let's see the IP configuration this is where we should read from so for our first interface GPO we have the GPO width of 4 which is 4 bit and the GPO width here is config to 4 bit however we say the name of the block is XRGVO. It means the block consists of two domains. The first domain is the XI. The XI is the communication interface. And the GPO is the interface containing a lot of registers connected to the LED. If you want to, if you want to know more details of these blocks, we can go to any browser and then we type XI GPIO Siling document and we click on it and we will find the information. Um, I already download the information in order to um, highlight some important important information that I think which is necessary to uh, control the XRGVO to understand the block and to understand what we are doing exactly. So this is uh, the XRGVO block diagram you will find in the document. As you can clearly see that we have the two domain. The first domain is the XI. So the XI which is connected to the slave S XI means slave interface XI is the protocol of the communication so this is the XI side of the XRGVO and on the GVO side of the XRGVO it consists of many registers, many flip-flops and a group of wirings connected to peripheral or something outside the chip for example, like the LEDs, the buttons. And uh, as you can see, they describe that the XI light interface, which is this is the interface. And that interface is a 32 bit XI light slave interface for accessing the GPIO channel registers, for accessing all of the registers inside the GPIO channel. This is the GPIO channel, channel 1. Uh, this is channel 1 and this is channel 2 at the moment we only config the channel 1 connected to the 4 bit so uh, sorry connected to the 4 bit and the channel 2 are inactive uh, the channel 2 is, is inactive and uh, next we will see the um, Okay, the register space. Why do they call the register space? Because the XRGVL block is a memory mapped block. Again, a memory mapped block means we have a block outside the processing system. But in order to make the processing system or to make the C code interact with that XRGVL block, the XRGVL block will have 
some assigned area inside the memory, inside the processing system, and that area represents the exon chip rail. So whatever we write in the code to interact with this range of memory assigned to the exon chip rail, we are talking or we are directly communicating to the exon chip rail block itself. That's why they, they call it register space. Because this uh, space of addresses represents some register, represents according, it will represent some physical registers on the GVIO side. And the details of how they interpret the information that we send into that memory to the corresponding registers inside the GVIO is not is totally out of the scope of this discussion and it's not necessary when we are writing the C code in the processing system so I won't discuss more about that if you want to know more I think you can google it but that's outside of the scope of this discussion and now again go back here so we had the address space offset and as they say if you click on the 3 we will go to actually this number 3 here uh, the address space offset is relative to the C base address assignment uh, how can we see what is the base address assignment or what is the base address where the area assigned the memory area assigned to the XRTPO starts we can open the Vivido, here our Vivido, we go to the address editor and you can see the cell, so the cell means, uh, so this is one cell, we have one, two, three, four, we have four cells and this cell is the processing system cell, again address, uh, address editor, the cell is the processing system and again as I say the XRTVO is a memory mat block, so there will be an area inside the memory of the processing system assigned to the XRTVL block and as you can see this is the information where the area of the memory assigned to XRTVL slave interface is uh, SXI means slave XI protocol connection that's all and the base address will be this is the base address this is and the high address means the end address of the uh, memory area when it's assigned to our XRTVL. So the high address will be the end of the area where we assign the memory to the XRTVL. And the base address is the beginning of the area of the memory that we assign to the XRTVL. And uh, when we look at the document, we can see that there's the address space offset relative to the C base address. So C, I guess the C indicates the configurable base address. It's configurable because when we like implement this block in the FPGA and then we connect with the processing system, the software we will know will config automatically config where the memory address will be assigned to XRTVL. We don't have to care about that. We just need to know the information of all of the steps the VIVA had already done to assign the memory to our XRTVL. And the, mem the information which are important is the offset address and the high address or the base address and the high address of our XRTVL inside the memory of the processing system. Okay, and um, this information will be very important when we start to do some debugging in order to understand which uh, memory cell represents this GPIO data register and what is the real address of the memory assigned to XRTVO represents the GPIO tribe. So the GPL tri-state tri control register means 
the register where we set our um, our TFIO input or output as input or output. So actually, TFIO is a group of pins. TFIO just literally a group of pins. So this is GFIO with four, it means a group of four pins, and we can configure each pin as an input or output. For example, when we configure the LED, usually we configure the LED as output, because we want to turn on the LED, and we turn off the LED. We don't read any information from the LED into our processing system. So usually we say we want to configure this four LED as output, and in order to config those four letters output, we need to write to this memory address some values in order to config the GPIO try in the GPIO register space as output. That's it. And furthermore, there there is a parameter that I want to explain. Let's go back to the VVLO and double click on the XRTVO zero. And now we go to IP configuration. We understand the TVL width four. The TVL width four is here, but uh, we have some output value default and try state value default. Uh, you can see they present the value is presented in hex symbol form. How could we know that? Again, we can see the indication which is 0x indicates the value after that is hex symbol values. And if we count, we will see 2, 4, 6, 8. We have 8 numbers of hex symbol. 1 hex symbol represents 4 bits and we have eight hexadecimal numbers, so we have. If we present this hexadecimal value in binary, we will have um, thirty-two bits. Again, one hexadecimal equals to four bits. We have eight hexadecimal values, so we need thirty-two bits to represent this value. But why the GPL width is 4, but here we have 32 bits. We write to the memory 32 bits, but the GPL width is only 4. It's very confusing, right? Okay, again, if we go back to the slide, uh, we can see that we are the C code, and we're writing the memory. So the 32 bits is we writing to the memory range assigned to the XR GPL. And it should be 32 bit because the X side communication between the X and GPIO with the memory is 32 bit. So that's why when we assign some data to the GPIO registers, it should be in the form of 32 bit, even though that GPIO register will have only the width of 4. Uh, how can I know that uh, the GPIO register will have the width of 4? Of course, we go to the documentation, and if you we scroll down a little, go to, for example, like XRGVL data register. We can see C GVL X width minus 1. Minus 1 because here they say there's 0 bit. No, no, no. Actually, this one indicates the um, indexes of the bit inside the register. So the index starts from 0 and go to the configurable GVL X width minus 1. Uh, and again, I just guess that the C means the configurable, and the X indicates like either is zero or one, either is um, the either either is this channel or is this channel. So the X either indicates nothing or indicates the two, because in one X well block we have two channel, the channel one and the channel two. So we need the X in order to understand which configurable port that we need to read from. And if we go back to Vivido and we go to the GPIO width, we can see this is 4. So that's why 
the configurable TVL zero width will be this this value will be equal to four. The converting from thirty two bits to these four bits is out of the scope of this discussion. It is done by the software and is it done by the inside of the chip itself, so we don't care. But we know what that oh sorry. But there's one thing that we know is that for example if we write thirty two bit to to a memory range where it represents a GPL register which has only the width of four bit. For example, we write this thirty two bit to this memory represents a GPL register which has the width of four. Then somehow through all of this process the software SDK the Zinc chip on the board they would automatically extract the last four bits and write to the GPL register corresponding to the memory range assigned to that GPL register so, so what does it mean? It means whatever we write here for example on this um, hexamol number and we write to be 1 then it will be somewhere here somewhere here it will be like zero, 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 0001 in the binary form and it doesn't belong to the last 4 bits so it totally be ignored and won't be stored in the GVL register the corresponding GVL register and if it won't be stored in the GVL corresponding register then it makes no impact on the LED that we are connecting to because the purpose that we are using the XITVL is to control the LED through the values that we store inside the GVL register and if the value that we write is not stored in the GVL register then we make no impact or we make no control to the LED makes no sense and this is just another example. For example, if from the C code we write a data of 32 bits in this form, then in the binary form, the last four bits will be 0101 uh, to, for example, to another memory range within the memory area assigned to the XRTPL, but there will be a small range assigned to a corresponding GPL register, then the last four bit will be stored in that corresponding GPL register. And the next note is that in our memory we will have address. For example, like address number one, then address number two, address number three, for example, etc. The capacity that one address can store is one byte, in other words, in other words, a bit. So at address number one, we can store a bit, and uh, a taste and address will be able to store another a bit, and etc. So when we write a data of thirty-two bits to the memory area assigned to the XITPO, for sure that uh, somehow the mechanism will assign to us four consecutive addresses in order to store the data, the data of 32 bit that we write to that memory and uh, as a summary once again when from the C code we need to write 32 bit because the XI communication slave connected to the XI TVL is 32 bit that's why it's config as 32 bit and we cannot even change it you can see uh, by default, they will have 32 bit, even though that you write something like zero, but it's still 32 bits. You cannot make any changing to this communication number of bits that you communicate. And the 
and then that's address uh, range corresponding to a GPIO register and because the red GPIO register with all the red the number of bits stored in that GPIO register we config is for is config for because uh, we connected that port to four LEDs so they just need four bits in that register so that register is config as four bit because of uh, the mismatch between the 32 bit and the 4 bit in the register only the last 4 bit in the 32 bit will be stored in the register which is the important bit make the impact in controlling the LEDs for example turn on and off the LEDs or configure the LEDs as input or output based on all the last 4 bits from the 32 bits that we write from the C code so that's uh, the theory part. Of, that's the theory part about what is the role that we are playing when we writing the C code, and how can we understand the XRTVO block? What is the memory mapped component or memory mapped peripheral from the perspective of the processing system? And how to understand the important parameters of the XRTVO, for example, like um, the GPIO width or the default output value, how many bits is stored in that value and what are the important bits in that value will make the impact in controlling the LED or configuring the LED. That's the end of the theory part and for the next part we will do the debugging in SDK to demonstrate all of the theory that we have discussed so far and of course I will have the part for for the action because uh, now the video is too long already and thank you so much for listening uh, there's one more thing that I want to indicate in the previous two videos I made the introduction project stored in the drive C because I think maybe if we store it in another drive the software we will know won't work properly however now I try with the drive G and you know all the directory which is different from the main drive of the computer usually config which is the C it still works properly so it's your freedom to choose which drive that you want to store your Vivido project. Vivido can handle it all.